Hello again. In the last video, we learned how to create frequency tables in Microsoft Excel. In this video, we're going to turn those tables into graphs and charts. So we're going to start off with the histogram. Remember, there's two different types of graphs. We have histograms and frequency polygons that we're talking about in this class. And so we'll start off with the histogram. Remember, you will find two files below. One is a data spreadsheet and the other is a step-by-step -step directions document on how to make a histogram in frequency polygon. We'll focus on the histogram. If you remember from the narrated PowerPoint, we use a histogram when we have a continuous variable and we want to present or publish our graph. Just like the previous videos, I set up both the spreadsheet and the document on the same page so I can go back and forth between them pretty easily. Uh, you'll note that we're using the same variable as we did for the group frequency table or the interval frequency table. It's our question on coffee. So how much do you spend on coffee in a week? And if you remember that there is a blank cell in this data point where someone didn't respond to the question. And so just to move that down to the bottom, we're going to go ahead and sort that column. And so we've talked about that already, but we can click on that column B. That's a left click. We go up to our sort and filter icon, and we can sort it, and I like doing smallest to largest. Don't forget to make sure you're expanding the selection and click sort. And again, that pushes it down to that empty cell down to the bottom. Now, that's not going to make a big deal for what we do here in this video, but again, in uh, later portions of the class, making sure that you have those blank cells at the bottom will matter. So it's a good practice to get into whenever you can. Go ahead and move those blank cells down to the bottom. So we want to create a histogram. So if we go to our Word document over here, we'll see our step by steps. And if you look at it just briefly, you'll see that we'll have our steps for the histogram. And then at the very bottom, we'll have a few steps for a frequency polygon. I'll show that in a separate video. So we'll spend a lot of time on the histogram. The frequency polygon will go pretty, pretty quick. You will note that the steps to creating a histogram are going to be very familiar. The first few steps are going to be almost exactly the same as our frequency tables, uh, except we will make a few minor adjustments to that. We don't need three columns in our table, we only need two. So just remember that when you're doing the exam or doing an assignment, you do need to show both the frequency table as well as the histogram. So make sure that you represent both of them in your spreadsheet. Now you notice we already did the very first step. So let's go ahead and jump to step number two. We've seen this step before. We're gonna go insert pivot table. We're gonna select our data select where we're going to locate it and we're going to click OK. So in our spreadsheet, we'll go up to our insert tab, click on pivot table. We'll select the column that we want. Again, we just want column B, so I'm just going to select that column. I want to go to the existing worksheet, so I'm going to replace the location that's currently there. And again, I want to Put my table a few columns away from my data. Again, I'll just select column G, row three. And we're going to click OK. And so all this should look familiar to you. We, we've done this a couple times already. Notice we have our variable here of coffee. So I'll go ahead and click that variable. Now, this time, instead of having our variable twice in our sum of values box down here, we're just going to want it to have it there once. And we already do have it there once. What we don't have is our variable in our rows box down here. So we're going to drag that once down to that rows box. And that's all I'm going to need here. Let's go back to the Word document. Notice again that we're going to want to right click the title of the second column. We want to make sure that says summarize by count. And we're going to rename each of the columns as midpoint and frequency. And this is under step number four. Now note that we're going to group our variable again here because we have more than 10 values of equal width and we want to condense it down to seven or 10 intervals. We're gonna to have to group our variable just like we did the last time. I remember in that last video, we've already done this and so we can move a little bit quicker here. If you need to go back and remind yourself, um, go back and look at that, that video. So let's go back to the spreadsheet. I'm gonna to go to that second column. I'm gonna right click. I'm going to summarize values by count. And again, the reason why we're doing that is so that for each value that's in our data set, we know how many times it is occurring. We will go ahead and rename our labels here. This isn't a necessary step because we're really just after the graph. 
uh, but this will help you to remember to make sure you put in your midpoints and that this is a frequency graph. Once we've done that, we need to create our groups. So if you right click on your very first row underneath the headers, we can go down to uh, the group icon. And notice again that it still has our starting at and ending at. We're not going to mess with those. We're going to leave those the same. What we are going to adjust is the by field. Now this by field is the interval width. And so we want an interval width or a range, not of 10 here. So again, I'm going to create 10 intervals, um, but rather of 7.7. .7. And remember, we got that value by taking our highest value of 76 minus our lowest value, which happens to be zero here, very convenient. And then we added something. In this case, we added one. That gave us 77. We divided by the number of intervals. We wanted 10 intervals, so we divide by 10, and that gave us 7.7. .7. We'll go ahead and click OK. Now we have our intervals that we're going to use for our graph. Let's go back to our Word document. So remember that intervals with frequency counts of zero will not be automatically shown. We need to get those. So we showed this in the last video as well. We need to go to Build Settings and Show Items with No Data. So back in my spreadsheet, I'm going to right click, go down to Field Settings, make sure we're on the Layout and Print tab, and I want to check the box here that says Show Items with No Data. We'll click OK. And now we get back those two missing intervals that didn't have any frequency counts in them. Because remember, we want to have 10 intervals, and so we need those two. Now, again, when you're looking at it, you'll notice that uh, we have blanks here. Those should be zeros, right? And so we want to make sure that we get those zeros back. So if you're looking at your Word document, we'll right click on our cell again. And this time we're going to go to pivot table options, and we're going to enter zero in for those empty empty cells. So right click, pivot table options, make sure on your layout and format tab, and then down here where it says for empty cells show, we're going to type in zero. And we'll click OK. So everything at this point is pretty much review uh, of what we did in the last video. All right, so next, we want to move, remove that first and last interval with the frequency counts of zero. We don't need them, they're redundant. It'll just make our graph larger than it needs to be. So the process is still going to be the same. We're going to right click, we're going to go down to filter, and we're going to hide selected items. We're going to do that for both the first and the last row. So filter, hide selected items. Now, something you don't need to do here because it's not going to matter is you don't need to adjust the second value in each of your intervals because um, we're going to replace all these values with midpoints anyway. Let's go back to our Word document. So notice that's our next step. We need to replace each of those intervals with midpoints. There is a formula for that. You'll see it there. It's L subscript I plus L subscript I plus 1 divided by 2. Um, that's really fancy. Uh, it's probably more complicated than you need to create a midpoint. Um, I'll show you a bit of a faster way to do it. Uh, and you don't need to do it for every single one of the intervals. But just so you know notation here, and you should know notation, you should know what these symbols represent. The L here represents the lower bound of an interval. In this case, it's interval I. So if I want the midpoint for the very first interval, I'm gonna look for the lower bound of that first interval, interval I. I'm gonna add it to the lower bound of the next interval. In other words, the first interval plus one. 1 plus 1 is 2, so we're talking about the second interval. So I'm going to take the lower bound of the first interval plus the lower bound of the second interval. Then I'm going to divide it by 2, and that's going to give me the midpoint. So let's go to our spreadsheet, and let's do that. So I'm going to want, I want to get the midpoint for this very first interval. So I'm going to take the lower bound of the first interval, so that is 0. I'm going to add it to the lower bound of the second interval. That's 7.7. .7. Then I'm going to divide that by two, and that's going to give me my midpoint. So it might be nice to have a calculator handy for that. Uh, here I'm just going to use the calculator that is on the computer. If you ever want to get to it, you can just go down to the search field and type in calculator. It'll show up. You can click on it. And we can just add those values together. 
Um, zero plus 7.7 .7 is going to be 7.7. .7, so I'm just going to take a shortcut and type in 7.7. .7, and I'll divide by 2 because that's what my formula told me to do. And I'm going to get 3.85. So that's going to be my very first midpoint. To make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to put that value and type it into the cell a couple columns away from my table. So 3.85. So I'll show you a shortcut here in a second so you don't have to do this for every single one of your intervals. Okay, so we have the midpoint for our very first interval. Uh, using our formula, if I want to get the midpoint for that second interval, I will take the lower bound of the second interval. In this case, I would now be 2, so this would be L2, plus the lower bound of the next interval or the third interval. So 2 plus 1 would be 3. So I'm going to take the lower bound of the second interval plus the lower bound of the third interval. And I'm going to divide by 2. So notice I here is variable. It changes depending on which interval or which row I am using, whether it's the first, second, third, or fourth, fifth, so on and so forth. So here we're going to take the lower bound of that second interval. It's 7.7. .7. We're going to take the lower bound of the third interval. It's 15.4. I'll go to my calculator. I'm going to clear this out. So 7.7 .7 plus 15.4. That gives me 23.1. I'm going to divide by 2. And so my second interval midpoint is going to be 11.55. Uh, if we were to subtract those two values from each other, we would get our interval width of 7.7. .7. So we could add 7.7 .7 down the column, and that would give us all of our midpoints. But there's a faster way than that. We can go ahead and highlight these two cells so our, for our first and second midpoint. And for this to work, you need to have two midpoints there. And then I'm going to hover over this bottom right-hand corner. You see this little box there, and you'll see that my cursor comes goes from um, across to like a crosshairs. Once it does that, I'm going to left click and hold. I'm just going to drag that selection down. And what Excel is going to do is going to anticipate that I want to add the difference of those two values, in this case 7.7, .7, to each of the previous values. And so now I have all the midpoints. So feel free if you want to go interval by interval using the formula, you can do that. It's going to take a lot of time. Uh, if you want to get the first two intervals or even the first interval and add the interval width, you can do that. That'll save you some time, but still probably more than you need. Um, or you can just get the first two midpoints and then use the drag feature in Excel and you'll have all your midpoints. Now you'll be tempted to just copy over the midpoints into your table, but unfortunately Excel won't let you do a copy here. So you will have to type each of these in, but you have them there next to you. So it'll go fairly uh, fast. There are the midpoints for our graph. Okay, so let's go to our Word document. We have our midpoints in there. Now we want to go ahead and create our graph. So in step number five, we're going to click the first line of the table. When we do that, we're going to see this pivot table tools. Sometimes it's called analysis. In the overhead tabs, tabs is going to pop up. And we want to then click on pivot chart, click on column, and then clustered column. And so that'll give us our chart that we want for the histogram. So back in Excel, I'm going to click on that table. And you'll see at the top we have pivot table analyze. I will click on that pivot table analyze, and then you're going to see what's called a pivot chart. So we'll click on pivot chart. We have a whole lot of options there. And in fact, the one that we're interested in is the default. It is the column, clustered column. If you hover over it, it'll give you a preview of what you're going to get. And so we're going to click OK. And that's going to give us the start of our histogram. So notice it's going to place our histogram over some of our data in our spreadsheet. I'm going to move it just so that it's not blocking anything. And so to do that, you can just hover over it, left click, hold, and then you can drag it around. 
I'm going to drag it here to the right of my table. And you're going to notice that this is not in the format that we want. We have these unsightly lines in the background. We want to get rid of those. We don't have labels on the X or Y axis. We still need to give it a title. And then notice that our bars aren't touching. So if our bars aren't touching, it's not a histogram. It's a bar chart. And so for it to be a histogram, these bars need to touch. When the bars touch, it indicates that we have a continuous variable here on the X axis. And again, this being dollars spent on coffee. Uh, as bars with their spaces in between, that's saying that this is a discrete variable uh, and not continuous. But certainly we can have values that are in between these midpoints. In fact, if you look at our data, we do. So we need to make those adjustments to our, our histogram before we're, we're finished with this video. So let's go over to our Word document. So this is going to be a step six now that we have that histogram. So we want to be able to add some access titles. And there's a quick way to do this. We can go to our design tab and we can go to quick layout. And one of the options is going to give us that title with the access labels. And it's going to clean up our graph a little bit. And that's going to be option number eight. So back in our spreadsheet, at the top here, again, you're going to see this design tab. We're going to click on that design tab. And over to on the left-hand side, you're going to see this quick layout icon. And we're going to click on it. And the one that we want is option number eight. That's going to be this option right here. And notice in the preview, uh, it's going to give us everything that we want. It gets rid of those lines in the background. It has the bars, so they're now touching each other. It gives us our, lay, our, our titles for each of the axes. And of course, a place where we can put a title for the graph itself. We're going to click on that layout, layout eight. And there is our histogram. So the last thing that we need to do is we need to put in our, our titles, our labels for the axes, and we need to put in the overall title for the graph. So let's go ahead and do that. So for the X axis here, I'm just gonna click in there and we're gonna type in dollars spent on coffee. Our Y axis title is just simply going to be frequency or count. And now we need to give it a title. This title should be reflective of both the X and the Y axis, as well as the population to which we want to infer. So in this case, we'll say the population we want to infer to is AU students. So we're gonna put that in the title as well. So our title might be frequency of dollars spent on coffee by AU students, or Auburn University students. So that's it, there is our histogram. Uh, just one last thing, make sure you check everything that you need on this particular uh, graph. And so that's what this last section is, is here, so double check your histogram to meet all of the requirements. You should have a label on both the X and the Y axis. You should have midpoints not the interval, so don't put in the ranges there. You want midpoints. Should, shouldn't have any gap between each bar. Remember, histograms of bars touch. And don't forget the title for the graph. So in the next video, I will show you how to do a frequency polygon, um, and we'll start with the histogram to do that, that process. So please remember to save your spreadsheet with your name as the file name and submit below in the submit file question. Uh, make sure that you practice these steps a lot. Um, in the exam, you will have to create your tables and your graphs in Excel. And the best way to do that is getting your motor memory working, which requires you to do a lot of practice in Excel. So get that practice in, and um, you'll find that once you practice a lot, it becomes second nature, and you'll have no problem with the exam.